Hello, everyone. Welcome to Asian Cancer Resource and Support Services Health Talk for the month of July. My name is Gemma Kim, and I'm a program manager. Next slide. Before we get started, I would like to give you a brief overview of what CRESS is. ACRES is the first ever Asian Cancer Resource Center in Oregon that aims to address the full cancer continuum, ranging from prevention, screening, treatment, to survivorship support. We serve clients in Cantonese, Mandarin, Korean, Vietnamese, and English, as seen by our brochures here. Our goal is to increase the culturally and linguistically appropriate cancer resources, education materials, and support. To learn more about specific types of services and view or download our brochures and share them with your friends and communities, please visit our website using the provided link. We also have a YouTube channel, which we share many of our health presentation, cooking demonstration, and many more. Please feel free to check out our YouTube channel by typing in the name below. With our presenter's permission, we are also, we'll be sharing the recording of this presentation on our YouTube channel. Next slide. There are some housekeeping items. Today's presentation will be recorded for future training purposes. Please mute yourself when you are not speaking. We are also turn off your camera and audio to minimize background disturbance. Please type the questions in the chat box we will collect the questions and have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Today's presentation will be uploaded to a CRESS YouTube channel. As a side note, our presentation is scheduled to run until noon today. However, our presenter will be staying until 12.30 p.m. to answer any questions. You are more than welcome to leave or continue to stay with us until then. To improve our health talk, please complete evaluation form. We value your comments and feedback. The link will be in the chat box at the end of the presentation. Next slide. I'd like to introduce our presenter. Emily Ryan is a Oregon licensed board certified naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist practicing outside of Eugene, Oregon. She focuses her time with the patients in both her private practice and within community health care settings. Her interests also include the hiking, biking, rafting, playing music, gardening, yoga, and qigong. She is pleased to have been an active member in the local community gardens and yoga community for over 11 years. Her educational, professional, and personal background have led her to strive for a healthy, nutritious, and environmentally sustainable lifestyle. Emily is committed to our, her ongoing studies of naturopathic and traditional East Asia, Asian medicine to better serve her community. Please welcome Dr. Emily Ryan. Hello everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Emily. I'm a naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist practicing outside of Eugene, Oregon. Thank you so much, Gemma, for that introduction and for you all for having me here today. And thank you for taking your time to hear a bit about the role of naturopathic medicine and cancer care. So during our time together today, I hope to cover or maybe even introduce to you all a bit about naturopathic medicine as a healthcare profession, who, doctor, uh, who naturopathic doctors are, NDs are, and how we can improve clinical outcomes in working with people diagnosed with cancer. So I'll just take a brief moment to share about my healthcare journey and how I got here today. From a very young age, I've always wanted to be a doctor. My, my inspiration is my mother, who is a nurse, and I just have memories growing up, visiting patients with her in the hospital ward where she worked. And I'm in awe of and have so much respect for the nurses worldwide and what they do to compassionately care for others. And this particularly sparked my interest to study medical anthropology 
and ethnobotany in my earlier education, and this exploration of learning about various medical models and indigenous medical practices around the world have really led me to realize that there's so many powerful and effective ways of healing outside of what we know in this kind of Western biological or allopathic medical view. It really got me thinking that my medical perspective was quite narrow. And so from that point on, I wanted to start my path of naturopathic medicine and also my studies of uh, ancient classical Chinese medicine and other East Asian medicine, particular, particularly acupuncture, herbalism, and other forms of gentle body work. So I graduated uh, with a double degree pursuing these types of medical systems. And these forms of medicine both use a person-centered approach in using the most natural, least invasive, but evidence-based uh, treatments to reach effective medical health results. So I've just been really grateful to use what I have learned to care and share, nurture for patients, um, family members, and even friends diagnosed with cancer. Uh, I've learned so much from all of these people. Uh, I learn a lot from my patients as well as I thank them for letting me be a part of their healthcare journey. And I've had the honor to both work in my private practice and with patients at several community clinics throughout the Portland metro area, such as um, working with people at the Providence Integrative Medicine Program and the Institute for Traditional Medicine um, and serving people at various stages through their healthcare journey. Um, there's so much to be said about the collective support of healthcare teams and generous community resources such as uh, Asian Health and Service Center that make up these kind of community wellness that I think is so much so important. So next slide, please. So uh, naturopathic medicine, you know, what is naturopathic medicine? It is a healthcare profession that combines the wisdom of nature and innate healing power of the body with evidence-based research of modern science based on these six principles that you see here. So do no harm, uh, the healing power of nature, remembering the inherent wisdom that the body is able to heal and protect itself, you know, identifying and entreating the cause. So we seek to identify and remove the root causes of an illness rather than just focusing on suppressing symptoms. Uh, as a physician, as a teacher, educating patients and sharing information with them to help make uh, to help them make the best decisions possible, and this includes uh, empowering patients to take responsibility for their own health, treating the whole person. You know, naturopathic medicine is a holistic medicine. We look at the entire person, not just the physical body, but we also strive to address imbalances at the various levels, whether it be mental, emotional, and spiritual. Um, I often go back to my classical Chinese medical studies and there really wasn't even a term or a separation for the mind and body that we, um, that there is today. So that's a big one. And last but not least, of course, is prevention. And this one, again, speaks for itself and I will go into it further um, in my presentation today, but it's easier to prevent an illness than to treat it. So we'll talk about that more in a bit. I just would like to emphasize that naturopathic medicine, it's about individualized care. And so each of us uh, experience things differently in the world. And this medicine is about finding the right resources for each person based on each person's needs and wellness and health goals. So next slide, please. So who are naturopathic doctors? We're referred to as NDs and uh, naturopathic doctors are licensed and board certified physicians who are trained as primary care providers. So we diagnose, treat and manage patients with acute and chronic conditions. In addition to four years of pre-medical school, we attend a four year graduate, graduate level program at a federally accredited naturopathic medical school. I believe there are six uh, in North America currently. And we are educated in all of the same basic sciences as an MD and also study holistic and less invasive approaches to therapy with a strong emphasis on disease prevention and optimizing wellness. So in addition to a standard medical curriculum, um, naturopathic medical schools teach clinical nutrition, homeopathic medicine, botanical medicine, psychology, counseling, uh, and more. So in order to become licensed, uh, we also take board exams within the state or the jurisdiction in which we practice. 
And in many states, including Oregon, uh, NDs are recognized as primary care providers. So uh, we use this, um, what's pictured here, this following therapeutic order as guidelines to help us resolve uh, patient symptoms and address underlying causes. So we try to do this um, while, uh, you know, effectively while using the least invasive force possible, starting from the bottom up. So uh, next slide, please. So again, our scope of practice is quite large. Naturopathic medicine is a distinct field of medicine um, and it can vary quite a bit um, from practice to practice. Beyond practicing general or family medicine, some naturopaths choose to specialize in certain fields such as women's health, pediatrics, oncology, cardiology, rheumatology, et cetera, and really specializing. Uh, a large part of our medicine is focused on diet and nutritional counseling with clinical nutrition being a real cornerstone of many practices. Uh, we are also trained in herbal medicine, and like your MDs, we are also trained extensively in pharmacology. So um, we practice pharmaceutical management, meaning we can prescribe, manage medications, order refills, and order and even administer IVs. Um, minor surgery in Oregon State is also within our scope. Um, we can, for example, naturopaths can perform skin biopsies and removal of cysts and other small surgeries. Um, so really the key, the takeaway for this field of medicine in particular, and for any other for that matter, is to find a doctor that you really resonate with and one that is best addressing your medical needs at that time. So next slide, please. Uh, so we talked a bit about kind of the wide scope of naturopathic uh, doctors and their role and how we're trained. Um, in my particular practice, I focus on the following. And so um, I really like to focus on nutrition and lifestyle counseling. Um, I am going through a training program now to further my education and mental health support, addressing trauma particularly. And um, I really enjoy working with uh, patients practicing gentle acupuncture, even offering a non-insertion needling as an option for people that are quite sensitive. And I, I practice with a lot of body work and massage. Um, other types of body work include so tai, tui na. I also teach qigong, which I think is a really great practice in addition to anybody's health regimen. So um, I do prescribe Western and Chinese herbs as I was trained in that, and I have a real passion for homeopathy as well. So just to give you an idea, if, you're, if you've never seen an ND before, what your visit might look like, um, initial appointments, most uh, NDs spend about one to two hours in their initial appointment to really get to know their patients. I think that's essential. On average, I feel like we do spend more time with our patients um, than others. And um, like MDs, we'll do a thorough intake of your health history, perform physical exams that are necessary and order and assess any lab work or imaging that would be appropriate. Um, when we'll review any other, any other things that would be appropriate. Um, we also do things that your MD may, may or may not do, such as ask about um, extensive history with your diet, um, exercise, sleep, social lifestyle, social support, those types of things to give us really a better picture to help you reach your health goals. So next slide, please. So naturopathic medicine and cancer care, it's really about personalized health care. Um, as Gemma was talking about earlier, we um, focus on prevention, treatment, all the way through survivorship. And we really uh, strive to meet patients where they're at. Uh, meaning we focus on prevention, treatment, and post-treatment. Um, if It's really our role to focus um, and to support our patients by taking the time to address them holistically. Again, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. Um, we really, uh, I think, shine when we can support uh, our patients through their allopathic treatments. So whether that be chemotherapy, radiation, immunotherapy, it really can support patients who are having a difficult time with these more standard treatments. And working together with your doctor, you can always find ways to either safely reduce side effects and um, find a good quality of life. So next slide, please. Thank you. 
Um, again, I just wanted to take a brief moment as I often have questions from patients about things that they've found out either on the internet or from a friend. And we live in a time where we have access to an abundance of information. And I highly encourage patient empowerment. I think education and uh, for each person uh, to support each person to do as much research and reading as possible is great for them to be invested in their health. This is uh, very important. Um, also, I do caution and encourage patients to ask their doctors any questions they might have regarding their health. You know, one thing my patients ask is, oh, I saw this on the internet and they've cured their cancer with a raw food and juice diet. Would this be best for me? Or I think this would be great. You know, in reality, things like this, um, uh, completely raw food diets and juice plans may actually be more detrimental to people or dangerous, you know, as they may not, for instance, be getting enough healthy proteins in their diet. And that can often, you know, these types of raw food fasts can add a high, what we call glycemic load. So kind of in sugar uh, imbalance, there's, there's really a time and place for, for these types of things. And even um, modified fasting, I think is, um, you know, a, there's a time and place for these things that, that has been really highly researched and effective for many. But the, again, it's about time and place. Um, Another kind of thought or myth I think is it's not just about boosting the immune system, you know? Um, it always, it's not always the right answer and it actually may be sometimes inappropriate. It's more about balancing health and supporting the immune system when necessary. So um, just because it's natural does not mean it's beneficial, effective, safe or appropriate. So I just wanted to address that. It's really important uh, to, for having somebody on board that you're able to discuss one-on-one -on -one with about your individual needs and to provide um, uh, you know, education for better health outcomes. So next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so really this integrative approach has been shown to result in overall improved clinical outcomes for patients. And this makes sense, right? The more we can kind of surround ourselves with helpful resources, we can be better prepared for what we're currently going through or what is to, to come, whatever that might be. Um, from the initial intake through diagnosis and treatment, I too find uh, myself uh, to, it's my job, you know, to make referrals when necessary to give the best care to my patients. So, um, you know, supporting through these kind of allopathic treatment regimens, um, working with um, the healthcare team. I think that, you know, naturopaths play a special role through, uh, you know, supporting the other treatment regimens, as well as surgery support, preoperative, postoperative care, and to really help support the body to help and recover through these types of uh, treatments. Um, again, we focus on diet and nutrition planning, which I can go a little bit more into, um, and lifestyle counseling, such as, for example, sleep plays such an important role on modulating the immune system. So um, really focusing on, on lifestyle counseling like that can be helpful. So our next slide. So again, this slide, and I apologize again for the small print, but this was an, uh, an article that came from the um, National Cancer Institute. It's by the National Institutes of Health, NIH. And this is a, you know, a, a recent article um, regarding a, a previous presentation. You know, Dr. Anthony Van Ho gave a very informative lecture about current treatment options in lung cancer. And uh, this one is, uh, about immunotherapy and it's titled new drugs new side effects and complications of cancer immunotherapy and this is talking about just general side effects that are exist and while this type of therapy may be very effective at shrinking cancer tumors like most treatments they don't exist without side effects so um, and on to the next slide i'll talk a little bit more about that so these are things that are addressed in the previous slide as well um, yeah, our SNDs, again, our main focus is to focus on the root or cause of underlying illness, but when that is being addressed, we can also help to alleviate symptoms um, to improve the quality of life. And often symptoms that we can help alleviate are side effects from these treatments. Um, a lot of them are listed here. So for example, 
for fatigue, which is a kind of, you know, it's such a common symptom and a very broad symptom, we can look at anemia. So we look at, um, we can draw blood work and look at lab values, look at um, micro and macronutrient deficiencies that may be contributing. We can look at um, what type of metabolites from tumor, tumor necrosis or tumor death are being released. And um, we can also look at more mental emotional aspects, depression, um, and other physical things like muscle weakness, weight loss, um, to really kind of target that focus or that root of what is causing the fatigue and how we can help change that. So again, naturopathic medicine actually, and including acupuncture can address a lot of these symptoms and provide relief for a lot of patients. So my next slide. So naturopathic treatment really looks different for everybody. Um, again, our cornerstone is nutrition. Uh, I have written there local and pesticide uh, free fresh whole foods are best. And I do agree with that. It all does start with a diet and what we put into our body. Um, supplements and herbs here, again, this is just a very small representation of what is available for cancer care supportive therapies. There are um, so many studies, and I can share with you a few resources at the end that have some, but so many studies and research uh, being put into what type of supportive therapies there are. Um, the ones I have listed here, again, are just a couple to give you an example, um, some of which I'm sure you've heard of before. So green tea um, contains, you know, anti-cancer compounds that can, they can inhibit tumor volume and reduce DNA damage from ultraviolet radiation. Uh, melatonin, that's a hormone that we actually naturally produce in the pineal gland, and it can block growth factors of certain cancers. Indole 3-carbonyl that has uh, an activated form abbreviated as DIM and this uh, particular uh, DIM converts hormones like estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone into less aggressive kind of less growth stimulating forms and actually has uh, properties that can inhibit breast cancer reoccurrence. So um, the amazing thing about, you know, these, this particular indole 3-carbonyl is that it does occur naturally in cruciferous brassica vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, kale, and other leafy greens and other root vegetables. Um, the last one I have listed there, reishi is again one of the most researched um, mushrooms as far as uh, containing triterpenes which are toxic to cancer cells and they can slow down or even stop DNA synthesis. Um, and mushrooms that I've found in my research, these have been best uh, work, they best work as hot water extracts. So, um, and again, there's a number of other therapies, uh, just I'll briefly mention modified citrus pectin, which increases, uh, which in uh, increases, um, oh, excuse me, which can help with prostate cancer in phase one and two human trials. And, also, there's, I'll mention mistletoe, um, some other injected therapies that can help with um, tumor to inhibit tumor growth. And again, with any of these things, since we're talking about individualized naturopathic care, it's really important to consult your doctor before kind of changing up anything. Um, and furthermore, I think, you know, really the bottom two go together, body work and stress management. Um, you know, body work itself, whether it be acupuncture or, uh, you know, I practice moxibustion, a really gentle form of moxa, which is um, burning a small amount, warming the skin with a, burning a small amount of uh, artemisia on acupuncture points throughout the body, um, can really help tonify the body and also using gentle body work such as sotai or twina, these types of body works and Chinese research, uh, research points to uh, overall improve immune function and, um, you know, better cell counts, decrease inflammation, um, improved appetite and regularized bowel and liver function. So I really um, like to focus on those types in my practice. And stress management, I'll touch a little bit more on in the next slide. So again, our medicine does focus on prevention. Um, I really uh, am an advocate for 
eating locally grown foods without chemicals, uh, or whether it be labeled organic or not. I think, um, you know, finding healthy sources of protein is also very important. Um, one thing that my colleague has said is if it wasn't food, you know, 100 years ago, don't don't eat it. So, you know, really getting back to the basics and um, making sure that when you're uh, buying things from the store, making sure you can read and pronounce all the ingredients, um, especially in the more processed foods that we are buying and making sure that they're more that they're no more than a few ingredients um, in each product. So really simplifying um, ingredients. Uh, home cooked meals are best. So um, we take a lot of dietetics class and nutrition, clinical nutrition classes and, and, and at least the uh, East Asian uh, dietary classes, you know, we really focus on eating seasonally and with diets that are best suited for you. And again, I think um, more indigenous foods are really important. Um, even fermented foods, I really advocate for patients to have digestive health awareness. Um, whether that's incorporating, you know, miso or kimchi or sauerkrauts into your food daily or into your diet daily can be helpful. And uh, this goes along with, of course, um, eliminating or at least reducing or working to reduce processed foods and kind of excess sweets. Um, and, you know, anything can really be good or bad. It, it, what matters is more the quality of the things that we're putting in our bodies. I also uh, just want to emphasize movement daily and my personal go-tos, again, that were mentioned are yoga. I practice Qigong. I've been trained in Qigong and have uh, learned a certain lineage or, uh, for about 10 years now, um, biking and hiking. And I encourage uh, my patients to, to get a massage, to uh, be active. And um, I, I really, in my practice, I teach Qigong to all of my patients. I um, really advocate for self-massage or acupuncture that they can take home with them. So I think that's quite important. Um, of course, getting outside in nature, we all know that uh, nature is a blessing and we, the more we can get outside, the, the better health um, and state of mind we can possibly be in. So um, mindfulness, breath work, meditation, these are all shown to modulate our immune system. And so really focusing on um, what works best for you, I think uh, it would, you know, it's important to kind of simplify our lifestyle in some ways and restore appreciation for rest and simple foods and calmness within our inner life. And um, yeah, it's just, I think being outside in nature is a huge part of that as well. So just talking a little bit about uh, early detection. So um, of course, talking to your doctor and taking wise use of pertinent early screening exams. Um, it, it's you know, best to detect cancer while it can still be cured. So anything um, you know, that you can talk to your doctor about any questions, whether it be about breast exams, prostate exams, blood work, um, pap smears, all of those are examples of reliable methods of saving lives. And so the earlier a cancer is detected, the better chance of a cure is found. And again, much of the recent gains in reducing cancer, cancer deaths come from better screening practices. Um, I will leave with you here. Uh, the, there is um, an acronym, CAUTION. So this is in the, uh, this, the, um, this is in the, in line with kind of preventative or early detection. The Cancer Society has a several and seven cardinal warning signs to be aware of. So change in bowel or bladder habits, a sore that does not heal, unusual bleeding or discharge, thickening or an extension of a lump, indigestion or swallowing, uh, difficulty swallowing, obvious change in a wart or mole or nagging cough or hoarseness. These are all signs that you can just address with your doctor um, just to be safe. And lastly, the next slide, I will um, leave you with some resources. These are just a slide. And of course there are endless resources and research and um, other organizations that I could have left you with. But I just put down a few here that are listed. Um, the last one there that's not spelled out is the Oncology Academy of Naturopathic Physicians. And there's also an American Board of Naturopathic Oncology. 
Um, and I just wanted to add two more resources that aren't listed here. Uh, I'll, I'll speak them slowly. But Dr. Lise Alshuler, she's a naturopathic oncologist and an author of a book called The Definitive Guide to Thriving After Cancer. She herself is a cancer survivor who has a radio show each week called Five to Thrive. She addresses um, topics in cancer each week and is a great resource, I think. Um, and also Dr. Neil McKenney has a book titled Naturopathic Oncology. And uh, it's a guide for patients and physicians that could be a helpful resource. Um, again, I would talk to your naturopathic doctor or your other medical doctor regarding any questions that you have. Um, but I think for that particular book, the latest edition was released last year um, in 2020. So again, naturopathic medicine can really uh, impact clinical outcomes when navigating cancer and cancer care, and especially um, within the integrative setting. Um, it is key, I think it's key to find a personalized support, um, a support system through any kind of health challenge. And this is something that NDs can really focus on. And so I hope to leave you here with some things that you've learned and um, on to the next slide. And thank you again um, for, for all of you for listening today. And thank you to Asian Health and Service Center for their generous support and resource to the greater Portland community and beyond. And a special thanks to Gemma for including me in the Asian Cancer Resource and Support Service Program as a presenter today. Um, and thank you, Vivian, for the slide report. So. I hope you've all enjoyed it.